Where did I put that thing? Ah. Well, welcome guys, thanks for checking out this video. So you're here again to find out the update to the Retroid Pocket 2. Now this thing has been bouncing around on YouTube like a beach ball at a Nickelback concert. If you know where that is from, hit that like button. So we're gonna look into in this video is how to update this itself. So I show you a how to, and I'll show you some benefits what you get with this. And also I'll show you some front ends that you can actually get to this. If you're not sure what front ends are, I'll explain that later on in the video. And also if you're from the UK or even from Europe, I got some good news of where they actually get your hands on for one of these yourself. Now, if you're new to this channel, I'm Jay from RightsBite.co.uk. I also cover things like retro gaming recommendations and new tech and new games coming to the retro gaming consoles and even more content. So now let's jump into how to update your own Retroid Pocket 2. Oh, yeah, I was recommended to uh, chuck on a Christmas hat because of the time of the year. It's got some reindeers and a little bobbly hat. So just to quickly show you guys, this is the update altogether, and you may be thinking there's not much different going on here. But if I go to my settings here, and I'll show you now and my about, you will see that it's still on version 6.0. Now, the first update was Android version 8.0, 8.1, and then this is 6.0 and it's got actual parts from the 8.1 update and put them over into the 6.0 version to get more stability and some of the features from 8.1. Now before I go ahead and show you guys how to do this yourself, I do recommend checking out this guy. I actually follow his instructions because it was very different for me because I was already on the 8.1 version and the way you have to update it to this version didn't really apply to me so I had to do it a different step. So if you guys there's a, a bit of a difference if you've got the original if you haven't touched the retro since you've had it you may not see the upgrade button but there's also um, retroids that were sold after that do feature the upgrade button that's the only difference so you there's an example by this guy from this channel I'll put the link up there and also down below and that will show you how to do it that way but for me as I said this was different and I'll show you guys now how I went to do it if you're if you had the 8.1 version and you want a quick fresh complete reinstall to, to the newest version so first things first, to get the update going, we're to head over to the website Wiki Retro Handhelds. There's a lot of information going here, but you got access to basically a lot of update or previous builds and some more applications. But to get this going, we want to head over to the reflashing your IP2 with Android 6.0. So this heads over to a mega upload file. This is pretty huge, but we only want to actually download certain files of this. So this is the ones that I recommend of downloading. So it's a bit of a WinZip. It's about two gigabytes in size. So we have to be a bit patient on that. And then once we've got all that downloaded, I'll show you the file now. So here we are now at my desktop. This is the unzipped file. So these are the content that is all that we need. So let's drag that onto the side. Don't worry about that folder on the left. So we want to, it gives you different methods of how to update, but we want to go to method two. And this is the program that you want to load with your computer. So this is kind of like an Android force, like firmware updater. So we want to go to the first browser. I've already done this, so that's why you see all this going. So in the top right, you want to click browse and find the MTX all in one. So that is in the method two folder and then go to our next section. Now in the second section, we want to go back into the method 2 folder, find images and find the file format or scatter. Now you're basically ready to go. You will see all the information now with the green and white bars pop up. But I do recommend backing anything up in case you've got any settings and stuff you want to try and bring over. But this is do a fresh install. And to activate this, you just click the download button and then make sure that your Retro Pocket 2 is connected to the PC with the USB cable. And make sure that your Retro Pocket 2 is actually turned off before you actually plug in the USB cable. You will then see a process bar happen at the bottom of the screen. It will take about 10 minutes to actually get this installed, perhaps even a bit longer. And then you see a green tick, and then you're all done. Turn back on your Retro Pocket 2, and then that will take quite a while, in fact, about 20 minutes. And it's got to install everything then. 
then the first thing you will see, it will boot it into the Retroid Pocket app. But don't be afraid because of that warning screen. It's just because you haven't actually put on the Retroid firmware that you can access from that website to simply download that and drag that on. So we want to ex exit this, and then this will boot into our new Android 6.0 update. So on the first time you actually boot this up, this does take a while, so just keep it going and be patient. It won't take this long the next time you've actually got everything done. So there it is, it's all ready to go. So first things I like to do when I've got this already firmware updated and there's nothing else activated on here, is make sure that your unknown sources is actually enabled by just going into the security settings. Just simply click that on, so then you can just actually um, install apps from the PC. So the first thing we want to do is download the retro arc and there's an update file that you can actually access from the Play Store. Even from your phone or any device, there's actually a 1.9 version that you can download from their website. So make sure you download a 32-bit version. So this will download the APK of RetroArc, the latest firmware of 1.9. So it's basically a file that you can install then and put onto your Retroid. So I'm going to plug this into my PC, activate file transfer, and this will pop up easily onto my PC, like so. So everything is loading up pretty nicely. So I just want to down get that downloaded file of RetroArc and then just simply drag that there onto my Retroid Pocket download folder. So where's the download? There it is. So you can basically, it's a lot quicker way to actually get other programs and features to your Retroid by just downloading the APK. So now we want to head over to the actual file browser, find download, and there it is. So that's how you get the latest Retroid, the Ret RetroArc edition to your Retroid pocket. So I do find now with this update, the actual installations are, uh, time is still basically the same as the original, but the stability is definitely a lot better from what we originally had. So this is RetroArc first time booting. So if you're quite new to RetroArc, or you just find once get some tips of how to set this up. So there is 1.9, so that's pretty nice. So first things I do, whenever I get RetroArc booted up on a system, is download the calls. So the calls are basically the emulators with that RetroArc use. So download the necessary system that you actually want to use on your Retroid pocket. The next thing I'd like to do with the RetroArc itself is head to the actual configuration file. So if I find that now, so you want to head to your drivers section, which is in the settings, scroll down, and then you will find your menu. So the XMB is probably the most user friendly. So once that is selected, you then just press back and we wanna make sure we just quit out of RetroArc. Let's go back in and it should load out the menu menu. So here we have designed on the PlayStation 3, as you can see. So now it's actually easier to navigate around and find out what you wanna do and change. So now that we have our cores all downloaded, we've got this nice interface that is easier to work with. You want to make sure your first thing you want to do as well is go to your input and hotkeys. So hotkeys then you can actually change the mon the menu toggle gamepad combo. So this will actually, as you're playing a game, you can just press a certain type of buttons and it'll just bring up this menu so you can easily quit out of RetroArc. So for my instance, you can change it around. I will go for the L and R, just click bam bam and I'm into the menu. So then when you've actually loaded games, you can easily get in and out of titles. So with that quitted, some people do like to use RetroArc as it is. I've read, I'm a big fan of it, especially with the PlayStation 1 Classic and the Mega Drive Mini, runs absolutely awesome. But with the Retro, there are a couple of things you might have to change. Now when it comes to front ends, where front ends are just kind of a nice um, a way to display your RetroArc actual pictures. So it's built in with a program called Dig but there's also a couple of more you can choose from. You can download this from the Play Store itself. This is called Reset Collection. Now, the one thing I kind of don't get on with this app because it does take a bit of a while to actually boot up. But when you're actually in, so I've only got a couple of games I've added. So there's my Sega CD. 
and you can see the display is pretty awesome so the more games you have it looks pretty nice but they could take a little bit longer to load there's my PlayStation titles So it does look really nice, it's a really good front end and you can always change the icons the way you like it. There's a lot of freedom with Reset Collection. But it is a bit fiddly, so for instance if I wanted to add a game to my favourite collection, I hold down the home to bring up my touch indicator, I'll have to hold down on it. And then there's a lot you can choose, you can even change the box art design, logo, banner, all that fun stuff. You can also update the YouTube ID, so it can actually play a video as well. And much like the original Dig one, you can also set each emulator to each console. So it is a bit fiddly, but you have to do everything from scratch with this. And when you actually scrape games, you can add games straight to the directory, which is pretty simple. I just have a quick example now. Hold down the home to get my gamepad on. Go up to the top, and you've got your settings here, and you've got your add new system. So every time you add a new game, or even a whole new collection of games, it would scrape every image, the banner, the, the front the design, the cover, and also a video clip. So it can take a long time, especially when adding games to reset. It does look and it does run pretty nice, but yeah, I'm not a bit of a fan of how you add games. Um, and also just a bit fiddly to just try and add things to your favorites and things like that is really good. Um, but that is a purchase app, so you can actually purchase that through the store. And next one up, I'll show you guys is the Retro X. This is another great front end for your Retro Pocket. It does take a bit of a while to actually get going, and also again, you have to manually install and add games to your collection. It's got a nice little tune going on here. Update already? No, because I'd be here all day. Okay, it must be updated. All right, then. let's do it again, and I'll skip ahead. So here we have Retro X all booted up now, thanks to the update. So they booted up straight into my PlayStation 1 titles. I've only got a handful, but as you can see, it is displayed pretty nicely, and it's quite easy to navigate to each system. So you've got a nice little navigation board there to jump to each uh, alphabetical actual letter so that's pretty nice it's pretty simple to actually access things like that you can also go to this tab and access any devices that you've added any consoles so let's head over to the Mega Drive one here it is it now there he is still in the name of Genesis even though it's called Mega Drive <laughs> well, that's just a personal thing um, so as you can see it displays it kind of works all right it there is a bit of a slowdown I, d I do like to have just a pure smooth experience but with everything that this does, it is pretty sweet. So for instance, if I just click on any game, it gives you some nice, simple information. Um, you can actually tell it to add more information and also link up video. So as you actually load up a game, a nice little video clip of that game will actually load up. But when you actually enable that, it does take a long time to add games to the system. And to simply do that, you just head over to this tab and you can add a single game. And then you add a folder from one system. So then you select which system you want to add, say for instance a Game Boy, and then you access this then to your SD card. So the way you actually um, sort out your SD card with your ROMs, you just basically structure a folder system and then just drag your ROMs to each folder and then locate it on the Retro, uh, uh, Retro X and then it should be on the, the system then, much like every other front end. But with Retro X, if you don't have an emulator already installed, Retro X will kindly just kind of link up a emulator already and then it will just install it for you and you only do that once so that is pretty nice by retro x so you don't have to worry about getting the emulators or anything like that retro x will do that for you and again there is a, another actual app you can use with the retro x to actually give a good front end and that is one called pegasus i've only seen a couple of people use this but i've seen it and the people have said some really good things about this now something different about pegasus is a it's a launcher so if you actually use any launchers on your phone say for instance the nova launcher you will just actually give you a different interface on the phone itself so instead of it being like an app you can actually click the Retroid Pocket will just boot straight into that system 
and there's a lot more customization with Pegasus but I haven't really gone ahead and do that and showed you guys because there seems to be a lot of hard work to actually get that going you have to actually download the app and actually do a lot more work on the PC to scrape the information so hopefully I'm able to cover a video on that if I get that going now personally I'm more of a big fan of the one that was included called Dig I actually went ahead and purchased this app because I want to support them and you actually do get additional options you can actually apply to this there's a lot more themes you can do and you can also go to the options menu and tell if I could just go here now um, it will actually say um, do you want your retro to boot up into this straight away so the moment you turn it on bam you're into the Dig now I'm not really happy with this theme, I will actually try and get something else going, but there are plenty of options to choose from with DIG. So the Retroid Pocket 2 has proved itself to be perhaps the leading handheld device of 2020, and also 2019 when it originally came out. And I'm glad now Retroid, the actual company, is listening to the consumers and getting these updates out there for us. It's a pretty awesome device, actually playing a multiple of consoles ranging from the very early days up to about the 32-bit area, and it's playing some 64 titles pretty well, and also some Dreamcast and some PSP games. Now they, they do actually need a couple of tweaks, but to play all these titles on the go, it is pretty awesome. Now in the time in this video, there's also some new variants of colors of these that look pretty sweet. And now you can find these actually at the Right Sprite web store. There's only a couple of these editions and you will find them in the description box below. So finally, we're at the end of this awesome year. But this has been the very first year that I've managed to actually concentrate and push my YouTube channel. And thanks to you guys, I've managed to get over my first 1,000 subscribers. So thanks very much. Now this time of year, please keep safe, guys. Have a great Christmas. And hopefully next year, I'll be able to provide you with even further retro gaming content with some reviews, some recommendation, and some latest games coming to these systems. So as always, as I end my videos, if you liked it, hit that button. If you want to support this channel, click subscribe, leave your comments below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.